According to many rumors, Russia plans to launch a nuclear-powered spacecraft that can travel from the moon to Jupiter while dropping by on Venus just before it, which can totally spark a new space race. Roscosmos, the country's state-owned space agency, has already announced that its spacecraft that transports astronauts, cosmonauts, or other equipment from one orbit to another is scheduled to launch on an interplanetary mission in 2030. Zeus, the spacecraft's energy module, is designed to essentially be a mobile nuclear power plant, generating enough power to propel heavy cargo through deep space. It would be safe to suggest that the Russians aren't the only ones working on ways to shorten travel time in space, as several countries have their eyes on similar technology. As of now, spacecraft solely depend upon solar power or gravity to accelerate through space, but that means it could take three years or longer for astronauts to conduct a two-way tour to Mars. Using a nuclear-powered spacecraft, NASA believes that the travel time could be cut from three years to two, which is a significant reduction and sounds lucrative. A 10-kilowatt reactor integrated with a lunar lander on the moon as early as 2027 is what the U.S. hopes for. However, NASA has only been able to send one nuclear reactor to space on a satellite in 1965. Other spacecraft, like the Mars Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, are also nuclear-powered, but they don't use a reactor. Russia, on the other hand, has propelled more than 30 reactors into space. According to Russian state news agency Sputnik, the Russian Zeus module would advance those efforts by using a 500-kilowatt nuclear reactor to propel itself from one planet to the next. The mission plan calls for the spacecraft to approach the moon first, then head towards Venus, where it can use the planet's gravity to shift directions towards its final destination, Jupiter. That would help conserve propellant. Alexander Blushenko, Roscosmos Executive Director for Long-Term Programs and Science, believes that the entire mission would last approximately four years. During a presentation in Moscow on Saturday, Blushenko said Roscosmos and the Russian Academy of Sciences are still working to calculate the flight's ballistics or trajectory as well as the amount of weight it can carry. Sputnik reported that Russia is designing a space station that uses the same nuclear-powered technology while the mission may ultimately be a forerunner to a new frontier of Russian spaceflight. Now, nuclear energy clearly has advantages over solar power in space, as currently most spacecraft get their energy from a few sources – the sun, batteries, or radioisotopes. A radioisotope is an atom that has excess nuclear energy, making it unstable. This excess energy can be used in one of three ways – emitted from the nucleus as gamma radiation, transferred to one of its electrons to release it as a conversion electron, or used to create and emit a new particle from the nucleus. To quote an example, NASA's Juno spacecraft, built by Lockheed Martin and operated by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, at Jupiter uses solar panels to generate electricity. Solar power can also be used to charge batteries in a spacecraft, but the energy source becomes less powerful as a spacecraft gets farther and farther away from the sun. In other use cases, lithium-ion batteries can help power short emissions on their own, making them self-sufficient like in the Huygens probe, where batteries were used to briefly land on Saturn's moon. Titan six years ago, which was one of Saturn's 150 moons, but the only one with substantial, dense atmosphere and liquids in the form of rivers, lakes, and seas on its surface. NASA's twin Voyager spacecraft used radioisotopes, often dubbed as nuclear batteries, to survive the dissonant and bone-breaking environments of the interstellar space, but that's not the same as bringing a nuclear reactor on board. Nuclear reactors clearly hold several advantages over the former, as they can survive cold, damp, and dark areas of the solar system without requiring sunlight. They're also reliable for longer patches of time, as the Zeus nuclear reactor is designed to last more than a decade. Plus, they can propel spacecraft to other planets in less time. Talking of the downside of nuclear power, only certain types of fuel, let's say highly enriched uranium, can withstand a reactor's extremely high temperatures. They pose a significant safety hazard, which should raise some ears as in December last year, the United States strictly prohibited the use of highly enriched uranium to propel objects into space if a mission is possible with other nuclear fuel or non-nuclear power sources. Russian engineers began developing the Zeus module in 2010, with the goal of sending it to orbit within two decades, and their progress aptly suggests that they are on the right track to reach that milestone. Based on Sputnik reports, Russian engineers started manufacturing and testing a prototype in 2018. Roscosmos also signed a contract last year worth $57.5 million that put a design company based in St. Petersburg in charge of a preliminary design. 
The technology could help Russia with its lofty ambitions to successfully develop a new space station by 2025, as the BBC reported that Russia plans to cut ties with the International Space Station, which it shares with the US, Japan, Europe and Canada. Russia launched the International Space Station in partnership with the United States in 1998, but Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov told the state TV channel Russia One that the ISS's condition leaves much to be desired. Indeed, the station has recently experienced air leaks and a breakdown of its oxygen supply system. Mr. Borisov, who oversees Russia's space industry, announced the move during a television appearance to discuss the government's plans to build a new space station with international partners. Although many of its modules were designed to last only 15 years, the ISS is expected to remain in orbit until at least 2030. Russia's space agency Roscosmos said on Sunday that the decision to leave the program was not yet final, Russia's Interfax news agency reported. Roscosmos had said previously that it was open to extending its participation in the project beyond 2024. The decision will be made based on the technical condition of the station modules, which have mostly expired their service life, as well as our plans to deploy a new national orbital service station, the space agency said. The Russian space ambitions are being pushed by the Russian president, Vladimir Putin himself, who believes that Russia must retain its status as a nuclear and space power. The comments came on the 60th anniversary of the pioneering space flight that saw Yuri Gagarin become the first person to reach orbit and made him a symbol of Russian pride. He took the opportunity to add by saying, we will analyze what needs to be done to strengthen our position in this strategic industry. But amidst all of this talk, one can surely not be naive enough to miss the Russia's throw of shade to space-time dabbler Elon Musk by their plans. Vladimir Koshlikov, who heads the Keldish Research Center in Moscow, said, Elon Musk is using the existing tech developed a long time ago, and that he is a businessman. He took a solution that was already there and applied it successfully. His agony and resentment with Musk can be explained by the fact that the Russians are planning the establishment of a Martian settlement of their own, an idea long cherished by the father of Dogecoin. Now, the idea of intermingling nuclear energy to explore space isn't a new one, as both the United States of America and the USSR have romanced with the scheme early on, be it NASA's Project Rover in 1955 or the Soviet RD-0140. NASA, which most recently tested a nuclear reactor for spaceflight in 2012, is still soliciting proposals for nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion that could propel a mission to Mars, potentially putting the first man on the red planet. Now, whether the Russians achieve the feat or the Americans snatch this round, there is actually no real winner in this scenario, apart from science as any progress in this field resonates with the fact that amid all examples of poor allocation of money into wrong priorities, some countries in the world are taking on the challenges that lie ahead in the cosmos. With continued perseverance comes great achievements, the ones we all anticipate that would one day facilitate the lofty ideas of space cargo travel and, of course, the establishment of a habitable base on the red planet from where man would try to get to other planets like Jupiter in its command. Stay tuned to our channel with fingers crossed for more insight on what the space giants are up to.